How many times have you seen alliances crumble or confederacies unravel under the weight of rivalries and intrigues? I bet it's happened more often than you'd imagine. Well, today, I'll try to unveil all the secrets about alliances and confederacies in Travian legends, and perhaps you'll discover how these dynamics can make the difference between success and failure in this world of strategy and diplomacy. Are you ready to uncover the tricks of the trade? Then, sit back and let's get started. Before we begin, I want to clarify that this episode focuses on the technical aspects, not strategy, as every alliance has its way of doing things. However, in the future, we'll try to interview some alliance admins to provide practical examples of alliance management. Let's start by talking about alliances. Alliances are groups of players who play together and can contain up to 60 players. There are two types of alliances, pre-start alliances formed before the server begins and map alliances founded in-game by recruiting players on the same server and in the same area. To create an alliance, you need a level 3 embassy. To join an alliance, you only need a level 1 embassy. Remember that the embassy is just a prerequisite for founding an alliance, not necessary to maintain it, but how do you create an alliance? To form a new alliance, build a level 3 embassy, and within the embassy building, select the Found Alliance tab. Enter the tag and alliance name and click Save. By doing this, you'll become the proud founders of an important alliance. To invite new members to the alliance, there are two ways. If you have the player's nickname, you can go to the options page of the alliance and click invite player. Alternatively, from the player's profile, click on the last icon just below the hero's image. Joining or leaving an alliance is just as simple. To enter an alliance, you need to be directly invited by a member of the alliance with the correct permissions. Once invited, simply accept the invitation at the embassy. To leave an alliance, go to the alliance options and click leave alliance. Now, let's move on to the advantages of being part of an alliance. Alliances offer various bonuses that can be unlocked through resource donations from members. There are four types of bonuses, recruiting, philosophy, metallurgy, and commerce. Each bonus has five unlockable levels with increasing effects. For example, the training bonus speeds up troop recruitment, while the philosophy bonus increases culture points production, unlocking bonuses requires different amounts of resources and has specific upgrade times. Remember that there is a limit to the amount of resources a player can donate each day. Additionally, bonuses are active for all Alliance members once unlocked. New players have some exceptions when it comes to using bonuses to manage an Alliance. Administrators can make changes to the name, assign permissions to members, monitor player activity, change the alliance's profile and send circular messages. Admins can also use specializations to mark players as specialized in offense or defense and send mass messages to specific groups. As for confederacies, these are groups of up to four alliances that cooperate together, allowing them to send support between villages, trade directly, share wars, and fight common enemies. Creating a confederacy requires the consent of all involved alliances. Finally, non-aggression pacts, NAPs, are used when two alliances do not want to attack each other but also do not want to assist each other. These pacts are limited to three per alliance. When a player decides to leave an alliance or is expelled from it, there are some important consequences to consider. Firstly, the player can no longer receive resources or reinforcements from the alliance. This means that if they had reinforcements in transit from other alliance members, these will be sent back to the sender. Additionally, new reinforcements and resources will no longer be available once they leave the alliance. After leaving, a one-hour timer starts. During this period, the player is still subject to various restrictions. For example, they cannot receive new reinforcements or resources from the alliance, and reinforcements in transit will be delivered to their destination. It is important to note that this one-hour timer can be restarted if the player rejoins the alliance and then leaves again. At the end of the one-hour timer, the game checks which alliance or confederacy the player belongs to. If the player is not part of the same alliance or confederacy, reinforcements from players who are not part of the same alliance or confederacy will be sent back to the sender. When an entire alliance decides to leave a confederacy or is expelled from the confederacy, this decision can affect all the alliances involved in the confederacy. 
The same consequences that apply when a player leaves an alliance apply in this case. These mechanisms are designed to ensure that resources and reinforcements are handled correctly and cannot be misused after a change in the relationships between alliances. Remember that in Travian Legends, diplomacy plays a crucial role, and cooperation between alliances can be the key to success. Happy gaming, and see you in the next episode.